Hey, so in this video, I'm gonna show a little teardown of these Tautronics VH22 noise canceling Bluetooth headphones. I wanna make them a little more robust to basically water because I want to use them in the hot tub. I care about audio. These are my Sennheiser HD380 Pros, which I use whenever I'm tethered to something. Like right now, I'm monitoring the audio for this recording, but Bluetooth is also great and noise cancellation is great for, for kind of day-to-day -day use and especially in the hot tub environment, I do not want to have a wire uh, dragging to my phone. Um, and I have an iPhone SE, so it still has a headphone jack, but I don't expect that situation to last much longer. So yeah, anyway, these are actually pretty great budget noise canceling headphones, about 50 or 60 bucks, and I've had these for about a year. Uh, I just want to take off the, take, expose the electronics and see if we can apply some conformal coating to make them much more waterproof. So first thing I'm going to do is take these and expose the, uh, get rid of the pads. So if you look around here, if you just pull back the padding a bit, there's some little tabs. You can just use a screwdriver or something else to just kind of delicately Pull it around the tab, and once you have one of them loose, you can kind of shimmy around, and boom, comes right off. So now pad is exposed, uh, and under here, see we've got four small Phillips screws, which should get us to the next step. Boom, main system on chip and Bluetooth module. This is an antenna, Bluetooth antenna, integrated into the print circuit board, battery, speaker connections, and I don't know if you'll be able to see kind of underneath here, but there are a number of wires that split off around here. Um, and yeah, so this board comes off with, there's a screw here and a screw here. This is what's underneath the left uh, left headphone. So a lot more connections, two trim pots, uh, no battery, no Bluetooth antenna, presumably a lot more of the active noise cancellation circuitry. Right now the headphones are powered on and they are connected to Bluetooth and I am streaming music to them and it's still working uh, even though it's fully exposed. Two. This is the USB charging jack. So okay, it required a little bit just to get the charging jack dislocated. And now, bam, I have access to both sides of the circuit board. And I can see on the reverse side, there are the three switches, in which case, not super important to conformal coat both sides, but let's take a look anyway. So, this one has the headphone jack at the bottom, so I expect, yep, all right, just required a little, little to dislodge it. Let's peek underneath carefully. When we reassemble, we're gonna be careful with, this gets mounted properly. Um, so inside the case, there is these two little prongs for where the switch hooks up. And so we'll just have to mechanically make sure that lines up. Okay, so I took two disposable plastic forks, and that will allow me to have good access to conformal coat both sides, let it all dry all at once. Uh, today I'm gonna to be using this silicone-based conformal coating. It comes in a little bottle, has a little brush applicator. Um, in the past I've used a urethane-based conformal coat, but basically very similar things, kind of, they have a solvent, they have, uh, when the solvent evaporates, the silicone cures, and you get a thin kind of plastic layer coating the electronics, and that protects it from moisture, from salts that precipitate out, um, and also protects it from like metal, metal particles or dust particles that may kind of get short out two different adjacent pins, uh, and, and basically protects the electronics and makes it last a lot longer in harsh environments. Very carefully on a disposable surface using gloves, this stuff is flammable and dangerous in other ways. OK, 
very manual process, but boom, just kind of like take a minute, two minutes, call it a day, do your best. Cool. There's not too many components. Now this board has a USB connector. I do not want to get inside of that connector because I don't want it to prevent it internally from working. And then separately, it's got a bunch of switches. The switches, I also don't want to, to kind of touch the working face of because I don't want to prevent the mechanical action of the switch from working. And if I get inside the switch, get any conformal coat inside the switch, we could have a, a bad time. So, And then this, you can see they, they have this module that's just kind of on top of the main printed circuit board. That is most likely the Bluetooth chipset and all the like kind of main main stuff going on here. Um, and those are kind of made as modules so that they can be separately tested and certified. Cool. Yeah, with that done, I've actually covered both sides of both boards. The boards have been left to dry for overnight, which is probably overkill. Um, and the coating itself is transparent, so you're probably not going to be able to see it. I'm going to try to shine a flashlight around, and you may be able to see some kind of glare coming off of it. But in person, it's, it's kind of visible as just a shiny, thin coating. Okay, so within the right headphone, I had some problems here with getting the buttons to work. Um, I must have gotten some silicone into the actual like, micro switches, and that's a problem. Um, I kind of just played with them a little bit and seemed to have gotten them to kind of work, but it's not great. And uh, if anybody else is trying this, I would definitely try to avoid doing that. Um, the other thing is it's really hard to debug, even with a multimeter, because you've now coated over the pads. So you have to kind of scrape away a little bit of the silicone if you want to even just get a multimeter probe onto these pads now. But at this point, uh, I am able to just hold in this button for a couple seconds. And I get the blue power on light and a Bluetooth pairing. All right, cool. I'm going to start by reassembling the left left headphone, the key is the 3.5 millimeter jack and the switch. So the switch needs to be aligned with the plastic switch in the case and the headphone jack kind of protrudes a little bit into the case so I'm just going to kind of carefully wiggle it into position so that those two things are true. Yep, when I flip the switch the blue LED turns on for noise cancellation. Exterior casing Put that into place, flip it over, and now I just have to put in these four screws, go behind the headphone. Okay, and now on to the right headphone, so we want to be concerned with getting the micro USB jack properly seated. This protrudes a little bit out through the bottom here, and getting these three plastic buttons in the case to line up with the three actual buttons and then properly seating the battery. Hold in this one, which is the power button, for a couple seconds. Boom, blue light, power on and pairing. And I'm gonna try pressing it once to play. I hear some music, I'm gonna try the volume buttons. Volume's going up on my phone, down, Volume's going down. Pause. And hold it to turn it off. The only thing left to do is put these pads back on. So uh, again, it's just this kind of little tougher, it's still plastic, this little foam pad. And then you can see around the edges here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little clips that it just needs to sit below. So, honestly, lining that up the right way lets you get like a bunch of them in just kind of automatically as you slide them into one side. And then you just want to kind of work your way around. You can use a finger, you can use a screwdriver, and snap things basically 
into position. Slide it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A little stubborn. Eight. That's about it. Okay, so that's about it. The headphones are back on. They seem to work just fine. The only thing I lost was a little bit of the tactile function out of the buttons uh, on the three sw switches, three micro switches on the right hand side. So that sucks. Uh, I would be a little more careful with the conformal coat next time but basically functional and I feel a lot safer about like taking these into areas with moisture and stuff. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Thanks. Mm -hmm.